Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Spring Convocation 2006. Would you please join our vocalist, Clint Hagel, in the singing of O Canada, and would you please remain standing for the invocation. I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, we give thanks that we are able to gather with family and friends to celebrate the culmination of many years of study as students in dentistry, kinesiology, medicine, pharmacy and nutrition, physical therapy, veterinary medicine, and the Honorable Sylvia Fedoric receive their degrees. We are grateful for family and friends, faculty and staff, who have offered their encouragement and support throughout the years. Grant all who are graduating today the wisdom and the courage to use their abilities to serve the needs of the local and global communities, to preserve the integrity of creation, to refrain from that which does harm, and to pursue the way that gives life. Teach us to seek justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. Would you please be seated? Welcome and good morning, graduands and proud families. My name is Lee Pennock. I'm the University Secretary, and it's my honor to introduce to you our colorful platform, uh, platform party. So beginning in the front row, at my far left, your right, we have William Albritton, Dean of the College of Medicine, Trevor Gamble, Associate Dean of the College of Graduate Studies and Research, Dennis Gorecki, Dean of the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition, Liz Harrison, Director of the School of Physical Therapy and Associate Dean of Medicine, Chuck Rhodes, Dean of the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, Carol Rogers, Dean of the College of Kinesiology, James Stackew, Dean of the College of Dentistry, <laughs> Heather Magatu, Vice President, University Advancement, Michael Atkinson, Provost and Vice President Academic, Peter McKinnon, our President, Tom Malloy, our Chancellor, the Honorable Sylvia Fedoric, Chancellor Emerita, and recipient of an Honorary Doctor of Laws degree, Peggy McKercher, Chancellor Emerita, Stephen Franklin, Vice President, Research, Elder Maria Linklater, University Chaplain, Renita Falkenstern, Joy Crawford, University Alumni Association President, Kelly McInnes, Registrar and Academ Director of Academic Services and Financial Assistance. And in the second row, Jim Thornhill, Associate Dean of the College of Medicine. Dean Colbinson, Associate Dean of the College of Dentistry. Sheila Rutledge-Harding, Associate Dean, College of Medicine. 
Vicki Williamson, Dean of the University Library. Bernie Yurlink, Associate Dean for Sciences, College of Medicine. Judy Buzowetsky, Member of the Board of Governors. Gary Carlson, Member of the Board of Governors. Mary Baisley, a Member of Senate. Gwen Keith, Member of Senate. Lily Krause, Member of Senate. And Laurel Krause, Member of Senate. Vera Pezzer, Associate Vice President Emerita. Joan White, University of Saskatchewan Liaison with the Department of Advanced Education and Employment. Mavis Moore, Member of Senate. And in the rows behind them, members of the faculty of the University of Saskatchewan. Would you please join me in expressing to our faculty, administrators, and members of the university's governing bodies our thanks for the work that they have done in teaching, supervising, supporting, and encouraging our graduates. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I have the honor to present to you and to convocation this morning, Sylvia Olga Fedorak. When, <laughs> when Sylvia Fedorak was appointed Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan in 1988, journalist Dale Eisler wrote, who better to become Saskatchewan's first woman Lieutenant Governor than Sylvia Fedorak? Who better, indeed? Sylvia Fedorak's journey from the horse and buggy in which she performed her farming chores to the Landau in which she rode to the legislature began in Kenora, where Sylvia was born to Annie Romaniuk and Theodore Fedorak. The 1930s were challenging years for this energetic family as they were for so many others in our province. They moved to Windsor, Ontario during the war years and Sylvia attended Walkerville Collegiate where she matriculated as the most outstanding graduate. After the war, the family returned to Saskatchewan where Sylvia enrolled at the University of Saskatchewan and thus began a 60-year association with this university that to this day inspires our admiration. Ten scholarships, four university degrees, 51 assorted fellowships and directorships, and 33 published papers on her work as a research physicist pioneering cancer treatment. Athletics figured prominently in Sylvia's career. Twelve InterVarsity Championship Awards, four track and field medals, including a 1947 Canadian record in women's javelin, five provincial softball championships, three provincial curling championships, induction into both the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame and the Canadian Curling Hall of Fame. Meanwhile, her academic career flourished. Director of Physics Services, Saskatchewan Cancer Foundation, Professor of Oncology, the College of Medicine, Officer of the Order of Canada, the Saskatchewan Order of Merit. Again, to echo the words of Dale Eisler, who better? Who better indeed? Dr. Fedorak had a major role in one of the most celebrated University of Saskatchewan stories. Working with Dr. Harold Johns, Dr. Fedorak and the research team pioneered the world's first cobalt unit. And this work in innovative cancer treatment earned her an international reputation. It was not surprising that upon her retirement in 1986, she became University Chancellor. This is an office that has had many distinguished incumbents, including those with whom she is reunited at this convocation, Dr. Peggy McKercher and yourself, Chancellor Malloy. From the Chancellor's chair and into the Landau for the drive to the legislature as Lieutenant Governor, and what a fine Lieutenant Governor she was. Wisdom, warmth, and grace marked her service from 1988 to 1994. These are qualities in our public life that should be cherished. When they are found together in one person, they should be celebrated. Members of this audience will know of the public duties of the Lieutenant Governor. 
What is less visible is her informal role in advising first ministers or premiers of the province. It is a delicate and nonpartisan task. And Sylvia Fedorik performed this duty with great distinction. Upon her retirement as Lieutenant Governor, she again served her alma mater on the Board of Governors from 1996 to 2005. And she has continued to receive honors and awards, including the Lester B. Pearson Award in 2005 for exemplifying the ideals and purposes of amateur sport through inter-university athletics. Eminent Chancellor, it is now 12 years since Sylvia Fedorik served as Lieutenant Governor of our province. When I meet her, I still address her as Your Honor. She typically reminds me that time is passing and that she lost that title many years ago. My reply is always the same. I tell her that for me and for a million other proud citizens of this province, she will forever be Her Honor, Eminent Chancellor. I'm delighted to present to you Sylvia Olga Fedorik and ask that you will confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the legislature of this province and with the consent of the Senate, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, and I invest you with all of the powers, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. Eminent Chancellor, Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies, family, friends, and especially members of the graduating class of 2006. Good morning. I'm very proud to be a University of Saskatchewan graduate, and I'm so delighted, grateful that the university has honored me with the highest accolade that it can bestow. This honor is even more meaningful because Peter McKinnon has personally chosen to do the presentation. Thank you so very much, Mr. President. It's not often that the Chancellor uh, shares the platform with two former Chancellors, and I'm so pleased that my very good friend and fellow Husky at basketball player, Chancellor Emerita Peggy McCurcher, has joined us for this ceremony. My heartiest congratulations to the graduating class, and I thank you for the privilege of allowing me to share in your special day. I truly enjoy attending convocation. It is an important time when our university community, friends and families, or friends, family, and, and others can not only be here to see you receive your diplomas and your certificates, but also meet with you later as you celebrate your accomplishments. It's a pity that my parents are not here with, to help me celebrate. They both died before I was elected as chancellor of this university. However, they were present when I received my first U of S degree at a convocation which was held in Third Avenue United Church on May the 12th, 1949. They were two very happy and proud parents that day. Now this morning, there was the usual air of excitement as we all gathered backstage, donned our academic gowns, and were lined up for the university, by the university secretary and her staff for the academic procession. The traditional order of entrance, and it's shown in, on page six of your program, requires that the graduates are first to enter, followed by 
faculty, members of the Board of Governors and the Senate, special guests, senior officers, with the Chancellor and the Lieutenant Governor being the last to enter the auditorium. I take great pride that although it took 39 years to do it, I managed to work my way back in the line from being very near the front in 1949 to second last as Chancellor in 1986 and finally last in line as the Lieutenant Governor in 1988. I believe that no other U of S graduate has accomplished this feat. <laughs> Forgive me for the sniffles, but uh, I'm a an Ukrainian and we cry at funerals and celebrations. <laughs> for me, community time or convocation time is also a time for memories. I must confess that during the ceremony, my mind occasionally drifts away from the proceedings at hand as I recall events and people who have contributed so much to my personal growth over the past 60 years. I vividly recall the day in September 1946 when I entered a university building for, a, for the very first time. I was in a line of many very nervous first-year students moving along the corridor leading to the registrar's office, which was located on the main floor of the college building. The line moved very slowly, giving me ample time to not only study the facial features of a very large moose's head that was suspended above the doors leading into Convocation Hall, but also time to admire paintings of several aged gentlemen dressed in colorful academic caps and gowns. The, the large portraits were those of former chancellors of the University of Saskatchewan. And little did I know that some 40 plus years later, I would be the first female to have her portrait added to the collection. There was good news and bad news waiting for me at the registrar's office. My class timetable was just super, but the bad news was that I learned that all first ed co-eds would have to endure initiation into the Pentecideca sorority. I was told that during the first week of classes, we were obliged to wear pajamas, rubber boots, and U of S beanies, carry our books in a pail, and have U of S painted on our faces. I was somewhat embarrassed when I went to my first math class. There were 69 guys and one female myself in the, in the class. <laughs> as silly as it may sound, I did enjoy initiation week, especially wearing my beanie. Now, this is not the original beanie, because it was stolen two years ago, but thanks to Doug and Sheila Clark, who made this copy, I am able to show our female graduates that what they, were missed, what they missed wearing during their freshie week. In, in 1986, when Chancellor Emmett Hall's second three-year term of office was coming to a close, several friends, including Peggy McCurcher and Irene Bell, who is in the audience, asked me if they could nominate me as candidate for election of a successor to Mr. Hall. Although three high-profile U of S male alumni had already been nominated, they all felt that it was time for a female to contest the election. Uh, I really didn't think I had a chance of winning, but finally agreed to the nomination because I did want the job and was excited to think that if I did get elected, I too would have my portrait added to the collection. University Secretary Ian McLean sent ballots out to all living alumni with known address, and there was an anxious six weeks of waiting until I heard the good news that I had been elected. My installation as Chancellor was held during fall convocation in, in October of 1986 when Lieutenant Governor F.W. Johnson administered the oath of office. Then it was time for my very first official act as Chancellor, conferral of an honorary degree to Mr. Stephen Lewis. Now usually there are, there are a few hitches when the convocation uh, takes place, but there was a hitch that day. It was time for me to to uh, confer the honorary degree to Mr. Lewis, Canada's permanent representative to the United Nations. But Mr. Lewis was not on the platform. 
He had missed his scheduled flight from New York to Saskatoon, but managed somehow to get on a plane that landed him in Regina at about the same time that he was to be here receiving his honorary degree. So we carried on with the rest of the morning's program, the conferring of degrees and presentation of awards. It was an interesting experience to me, for me, to watch so many, watch the faces of so many, many nervous graduates as they crossed the stage to shake my hand. There was the occasional smile, usually in response to outbursts from the audience such as, hooray for you, Gary, well done, Effie, and a few, you finally made it, Dad. <laughs> and of course, how can I ever forget how sore my hands were after shaking so many hands? Convocation came to a close without the appearance of Mr. Lewis, but he did receive his degree later that afternoon when convocation, at convocation tea that was being held in Marcus Hall. My tenure as chancellor lasted only for three years because of my appointment as the lieutenant governor. However, I did attempt to attend as many convocations as I could during the six years that I served as the vice regal representative. It was always a very proud moment for me when the University Wind Orchestra played the Vice Regal Salute. But that is enough of this trip down memory lane. It's now time for the members of the class of 2006 to receive their awards. Rewards. As you prepare to be presented to the Chancellor, Tom Malloy, just remember that this is your day. The spotlight is on you. Don't be nervous. Walk confidently across this platform when your name is read. Have a smile for your proud family and friends. You probably won't be able to see them in the audience because of the lights, but you can be sure that they're following your every move. Above all, don't forget to give the Chancellor and the President a very firm handshake as you receive your degree. <laughs> and become an alumnus of the, a great university, the University of Saskatchewan. Chancellor, Elder Linklater, members of the platform party, graduates, ladies and gentlemen all, welcome to Convocation 2006. This is the University of Saskatchewan's most important celebration. It is here that we come together and recognize in a very public way the achievements of our graduates and the contributions to their success of their families and friends. This day also marks the admission of our students to the University of Saskatchewan family of graduates worldwide. And I can say to you that their record of achievement is a magnificent one, and I'm confident that you will uphold and enhance that record in the years to come. I would like to extend a very, very warm welcome to the families of the graduates that are assembled today. We're delighted to have you with us. You have shared the joys and the hardships of your graduate in his or her journey leading to the success that we mark at this time. We share your pride and we thank you very much for being here. This morning we celebrate the success of our graduates in several health science programs. We are very proud of the graduates of these programs and their professors. In the College of Dentistry, our students continue to do well in national student research competitions. In the past, several teams have won the nation's table clinic research competition, and this year, our senior students have had the results of their research published in the Journal of the Canadian Dental Association. Meanwhile, faculty members in operative dentistry have been awarded TEL funding for projects relating to intraprofessional long distance learning, and this has involved valued partnerships with other institutions in the province. The College of Kinesiology is one of seven accredited kinesiology programs in Canada. The college continues to attract outstanding applicants and boasts a very strong record 
both in teaching and in research that has a strong impact on the community. We continue to enjoy success with our intercollegiate athletic teams, with two Canada West championships and 11 of 15 teams advancing to championship rounds. Individual awards were many, to mention just a few, basketball star Sarah Crooks, who was the first Husky to receive a Nan Cop Award for the CIS Player of the Year, hockey star Dean Boyker, who was the recipient of three Canada West Major Awards, volleyball star Mark Dodds, who was CIS Player of the Year, football star David Stevens, who was Canada West MVP and Mitchell Bowl MVP, and wrestling star Megan Bidens, who was Canada West Athlete of the Year and who kept off her university career with a fifth straight CIS model, medal. The College of Medicine received full accreditation for its undergraduate medical program. The college, through the Department of Family Medicine and the Saskatoon Health District, our partners, you may have seen it, in the opening of a new integrated health clinic on the west side of Saskatoon. As well, faculty members in the college won major teaching, research, and public service awards, and the college continues its impressive recent research funding improvements. The College of Pharmacy and Nutrition is justifiably proud of the quality of its programs. Of particular note this year are initiatives to educate and train healthcare professionals to work in interprofessional teams to provide the highest quality care. Key initiatives in interprofessional care include involvement of pharmacy and nutrition students in cardiovascular risk reduction, HIV AIDS, and in important social dimensions of health care. I'm also pleased to note the involvement of nutrition students in the Canada Core University Program Partnership Internships. The School of Physical Therapy has enjoyed a highly successful year with the approval of a Master of Physical Therapy degree, a Saskatchewan Physiotherapy Association Award of Merit for Research, a Saskatchewan Physiotherapy Association Award of Merit for Continuing Physical Therapy Education, and several other student and faculty awards. I would like to acknowledge in particular the achievements of Alison Steen, who was elected as National President of the Canadian Physiotherapy Association student body. Michelle Kadash, who made a vital contribution to the formation of a National Health Sciences Student Association. And Lindsay Tash, a prize-winning athlete in the pentathlon, who qualified at the national level in three different events. The Western College of Veterinary Medicine is one of Canada's four veterinary medicine programs. We are particularly pleased this year to note the progress in the construction of an addition to the physical facilities of the college funded by the Government of Saskatchewan, the Government of Canada, and by private fundraising efforts. I'm also pleased to recognize the work of Dr. Ernest Olford, who received the Veterinarian of the Year Award and an Outstanding Service Award from the Canadian Council on Animal Care. And many of you present today will recall with appreciation the work of Dr. Chris Clark, who received an award from the Saskatchewan Veterinary Medical Association for his role in explaining aspects of BSE to the media and the public during the past two and a half years. And Dr. Lauren Babiak, a professor in veterinary microbiology and director of VEDO, received the Pre-Gallian Canada Research Award for his research into the mechanisms by which infectious organisms cause disease. The college also boasts some marvelous student awards, including a selection of PhD student Shane Jornay to represent Canada at the International Space University Summer Session in Strasbourg, and Raina Gunfelston and Heather James, who were among the 15 finalists invited to present their research at the American Association of Swine Veterinarians annual meeting in Kansas City. They were selected from a pool of applicants representing veterinary schools across North America. And these two U of S students, Gunfelston and James, placed second and third respectively in this North American wide competition. This review gives you a sense of the exciting range and the depth of activities to be found in our health sciences colleges. And now to you, our graduates, dentistry, kinesiology, medicine, pharmacy and nutrition, physical therapy and veterinary medicine, I want to extend my warmest congratulations and very best wishes to all. And I want you to know as you cross this stage this morning that you carry with you the confidence and the respect and affection of everyone at the University of Saskatchewan. We will follow your future activities with much interest. Stay in touch with us. 
we are proud to be your university. Thank you very much.